Hey guys, this week we wanted to do something a little different for our episode. We just recently did a webinar explaining exactly what our quadrant theory is and how we are using this quadrant theory alongside ketamine to take people through a 12-week process that we really believe will fundamentally shift people in their lives, bringing them more clarity, bringing them more balance, bringing them more inner peace and direction, and most importantly, self-awareness to understand in any given moment where you are at on this map and either how to make the conscious choice to stay there or to move to a different quadrant on the map. It's really creating a specific and unique self-awareness map for yourself. And it combines science, spirituality, astrology, psychology, and really, really bridges the gap between science and spirituality. And so we are so super excited to start this uh, 12-week process that will be officially starting the first class on July 11th, Thursday, July 11th. Um, so we have a few weeks, but we are going to start um, int intro calls, pre-calls to that. So if you watch this and it's something that captivates you like it did us and you're feeling called to it, please reach out. You can email mnscott222 at gmail.com and we can answer any questions or get on a phone call with you. But this really, this is the webinar that we did to really explain what the quadrant theory is and, and how we're going to go through this process with a group of people. So we hope you enjoy. And like I said, if you have any questions at all, if you feel called to join us, please reach out and we can go over all the details. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. Well, welcome everybody who's here live. And I know many of you reached out and said you're going to watch the recording. So welcome if you're watching the recording, whenever you're watching the recording. We're going to try to keep this under an hour, which I totally think we can do. We're going to go over the, the um, what's the word I'm thinking of? We're going to go over the process of the 12-week program, which is why you guys are all here. And then after that, we will open it up for any questions that you guys have. So if you have questions that come up during the presentation, during our explanation, write them down or you can put them in the chat too. And then when we're done, we'll go back through and answer any questions that you guys have. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. We have a little bit of a slideshow for you. Not much. We have really learned to balance that. He's yes. not a slide guy. I am a totally well, a slide nerd. Yeah, I like I like simple slides yeah. that you can see and not overwhelm with slide after slide after no, slide. No, we don't want to bore you. It's boring. <laughs> I don't like boring. We don't want to bore you for yeah. sure. So I yes. feel like we've actually really gotten a good balance yeah. on that. The, the slideshow isn't too too long. Um, but it will give you a, a really cool visual of what this process is. So, well, and l let me first, add, yeah. you know, we, we have, you know, we've been coaching now, I don't know, six years, whatever it's been. Um, and I will tell you this, we've been working with this probably for what, maybe the last month and a half, mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe two months. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, this is an absolute game changer, uh, we're learning it as well because it is really a map to understand, you know, going down this road of awakening and, and what's happening, uh, you know, in manifesting things or whatever, and really trying to understand how to actually guide people, you know, step by step by step. And th the number one thing is really understanding who we are. Um, you know, we talk a lot about this at our retreat. Uh, this past uh, weekend, and everybody was really kind of uh, it. It made sense to them, and and it really is kind of a a very step by step way to understand why you have the thoughts you do, how to then move through those thoughts without the ego being a part of that. Uh, and we'll talk all about that. So we are extremely yeah. excited to very excited. be here in front of you. Yeah, uh, talking about and this. share this with you. Yeah, like he said, we just presented it to the our our ketamine therapy retreat in Taos over the weekend, and it really 
everyone there was just mind blown really and, and it made sense so let me give you a really quick background for those of you who may not know anything about us you've just heard us yakking on about this 12 week program scott and i met almost seven years ago at a dr joe dispenza retreat we were individually on our own healing journey he had gone through a tragedy years before that back in 2002 he found himself completely paralyzed in a hospital bed from a rare, rare autoimmune disease and so he would sort of been on on, on the path a, a lot of his life I didn't in, in that way. I had always felt a connection with something, with God, with whatever, but never, never resonated with religion or anything like that. Always knew there was something more and deeper that I was connected to. So we met about almost seven years ago at a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat. As I said, we we're both on our healing journey, fell in love. Actually, we we joke all the time because we always say it really, there was no dating with us. It was just like, oh, we found each other again in this lifetime and it, it was, sure. it just was always was us, you know? So as we both changed and transformed our lives, we both felt a deep desire to help others obviously do the same, which I think is a natural progression when you go through some sort of a healing process that you want to help others. And so we met our, our best friend, Simon, who lives in England at a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat almost a year after him and I met. And he was going through his own healing journey with his wife. And so the three of us really became uh, really became passionate about helping people in and this, helping ourselves, helping too. ourselves for sure, as we yeah. went through the journey, helping them really what we realize now with it was inter integration, you know, going to these Dr. Joe events or Abraham Hicks or these really big events, but then not really being able to integrate that. So we came up with a process. It was called, we called it Beyond Limits. And, and we were helping people through this process. It was really amazing, really, you know. Amazing people. We had a lot of people go through that. Um, hundreds of people, I yeah. think, uh, actually went through that program and a lot of lives changed. It was really phenomenal. Um, it, again, it was more of a community and, and, and we were all kind of learning together, you know, which brings us where we come today because it's always learning. You're always learning. Everything's always changing because, you know, the more light that comes into this world, the more we have to step towards it and step and, and integrate it into our lives. So we're always growing. And the, you, there's never a time where if you stop growing, then basically you're dead. So we're always growing. And, you know, this brought us to uh, ketamine. We went to a ketamine retreat and uh, just because we needed something, we put on uh, workshops and uh, retreats ourselves. And when we did, we thought, boom, this was a turning point in, in our growth and a turning point in our professional uh, delivery of what we can offer people. So then we started doing uh, ketamine retreats ourselves uh, with the help of someone who went through our Beyond Limits program. In fact, her whole family went through our Beyond Limits program, uh, emergency room uh, physician who was able to prescribe the ketamine and to educate people on it with us, never used it in this way. And now we've done three of those retreats. And I mean, each one is just like, wow. And not saying that those people were our guinea pigs, but those people were our guinea pigs. We really wanted to see the effect on them and, and what the, not only, not only what the ketamine had done for them, but everything that surrounds the ketamine in these workshops, we have community, uh, which eat individual people that, that come to this retreat and they're small, you know, they're small little retreats right now about, you know, on average about 10 participants and to watch them bond, to watch them open up, uh, them to get the insight from the ketamine, which ketamine does, you know, very neuroplastic, a lot of insights come in and also with the music huge and uh the environment which we do it in beautiful uh environments like taos new mexico so here we are all of that <laughs> to guide us to this moment right here well this beautiful person will start to go through all these slides and explain to you what we're doing 
Yeah. So as he said, um, it was June of last year. We, we decided we needed a retreat. We ended up finding ketamine, didn't know anything about it. The, the retreat changed our lives. Along with our coaching programs, we had been also facilitating workshops and retreats solely using breath work and the process that we had taken people through. And when we did that, the ketamine changed us so much. Once again, we were like, we need to share this uh, with people that, that we have helped, but can't seem to break through that barrier with all the inner healing work that mm -hmm. they've done. So we've been doing that ever since then. We were seeing the profound effects the ketamine was having along with the breath work, like he said, along with the environment, what we were doing is very different than any sort of clinical settings that mm -hmm. ketamine is using. So to bring you into our quadrant theory, to jump from the ketamine to the quadrant theory, a, a few months ago, I don't, maybe, yeah, a few months ago, a friend of ours had sent us some interviews with a woman by the name of Jill Bolte Taylor, Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, who was a neuro neuroanatomist, meaning she studied the anatomy of the brain. I had heard of Jill Bolte Taylor years and years and years ago, watched her TED Talk, which became the first TED Talk to go viral. She, her TED Talk was in the 90s. It was the first one to actually go viral. It's still one of the most watched TED Talks to this day shows you the impact of what she was sharing. She was a, a um, neuroscientist, basically, but studied the anatomy of the brain. And in her late 30s, she ended up, ended up having a stroke. And when she had the stroke, over a course of four hours, what happened is the whole left side of her brain went out. She lost, the, she lost connection with the whole left side of her brain. And what happened in the course of that four hours was she slowly went into a state of euphoria, into a state of bliss, because she was only accessing the right hemisphere of her brain. Interestingly enough, she studies neuroanatomy and then ends up having a stroke. So the quadrant theory is heavily based in her model that she created after having the stroke. And what she realized really is that a lot of people would say, oh, your left brain or your right brain, or you, you, know, you only use one or the other, which, which she really came to realize through her stroke and through her her job is that we actually have, she calls them characters. We actually have four different characters because we have a, we have a limbic system. People talk about the limbic system, which is your subconscious mind, which is where your memories are stored. But we actually have one on each side of our brain. We actually have a, a thinking aspect to both sides of our brain. And so anyway, a couple of months ago, a friend of ours sent us uh, a couple of her, her newest videos. And as I was watching it, I thought, that's so interesting. She's talking about four characters in the brain because I, I did a lot of studying on the open focus method, which is those of you that may know Dr. Joe Dispenza or study any of his work or practice any of his work, his earlier meditations really used the open focus method for his induction. So how he would get you into a really relaxed state before he took you out into the field. And it, it was a practice that I use in my life to this day. But I thought it was interesting that he has four quadrants and that there was four different ways of paying attention. And I thought, wow, those fit under those four characters that this Jill Bolte Taylor talks about. And then I thought, wow, I've also, you know, sort of studied the the cycle, the flow cycles. Stephen Kotler talks a lot about this. There's many others, and that there's four quadrants in the in the cycles of flow. And so I I just sort of began thinking about where this four shows up in any in in everywhere in many many places that I had looked. And so as Scott and I talked about this more, and we talked about, wow what is ketamine doing when we're shutting off? It's literally a disassociative. So it seems as though it's shutting off the ego. Well, what is that giving us access to? That was our biggest question. You know, really like what is happening with this ketamine? What is ketamine? It seems as though it's getting people out of the ego, you know, people that we had, had hundreds and hundreds of people that we not only helped, but that we met in the Dr. Joe Dispenza community in doing these meditations, it was as if some could get there. Scott and I had. We'd been able to have these experiences early on and fairly quickly. However, many couldn't. Many were going over and over. And it seemed as though this ketamine was almost like a jump start to it. And so I started thinking about 
how that left side of the brain is the ego, how the right side is sort of the spirit, the spiritual self. And so we talked a lot, we started diving deeper into this. And so this is exactly what brought us to this quadrant theory. So let me go ahead and pull up this slide. Let's see how good I am at this. Slides. Ah, oh, look at us. Look at it's us. Pretty, don't not look at us. Look at you. I mean, this is all <coughs> your little creation. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to present this slide to you. Wow, that looks really cool, right? Very cool. Cool. I don't know who cool, did cool. that? But really. <laughs> so this is how we came up with the quad quadrant theory. This was really, you know, starting back from Scott's experience in the hospital with a voice, you know, completely paralyzed with a voice showing up to him in the middle of the night one night saying, what if your mind is not looking out into a world you think you exist in? What if your eyes are just looking back into your mind? And that's what, you know, this whole illusion of reality is. And, you know, he's, he's been speaking that for years and years and years, really taught me this. And then every, all these really deep esoteric spiritual traditions that I've studied in the last six years, it sort of was like this quadrant theory brought everything together. It's like it made everything made made sense to us after we mapped it in these quadrants and so this is basically the quadrant theory so i want you to think of your brain as having four different quadrants so your quadrant one is sort of the the egoic thinking brain the quadrant two is the emotional the limbic system of your brain of the ego the quadrant three is the emotional system of the now of the present and quadrant four is the thinking but is sort of like the the, the direct portal to the quantum and so as Jill Bolte Taylor describes these characters, right, she calls them characters. And so you can think of the character of quadrant one as sort of the nerd, the thinking, the learning, but then also the get shit done, right? Yeah, so, the doing. So the, the very much the doing, very much the identity of the ego. So I am going to create a business. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to skateboard. I'm going to, so it's, the, it's the part of you that's getting shit done. Quadrant two is really the wounded child because this contains the emotional memory of your past. So this aspect of you is the sort of the one that can get stuck in victimization. So this happened to me. My parents did this to me. My boss is doing this to me. It's sort of that wounded child. It's also when we talk about inner child healing, this is the aspect to you that you are working with when you're doing that. So it's not just the, the wounded memories of those first seven years, the limbic system, the subconscious mind, but it also contains the really good memories. So like Joe Bolt Taylor said, she lost you know, when she lost the left side, she lost her identity. She was no longer an identity, which meant she had no memories of her past. But what she realized as the years went on was that she, even though she was in bliss, she thought, you know what, when I die, I'm going to be in bliss all the time. I'm going to be in connection. I'm going to be one with everything because that's what she was experiencing. But right now I'm in a human experience. And actually the memories, the really good memories of my past enrich my human experience. If we didn't have those, then we wouldn't have the human experience. So the whole quadrant theory is based in we need all of these quadrants to have a fully balanced, enriched soul experience and human experience. Our whole intention with this is to help people understand that all of these quadrants are necessary to live a whole life, to have to find inner peace and wholeness and balance. It's just we want to help people turn up and down the volumes of each of these quadrants. So quadrant three is the is quadrant three and four is the present. Quadrant one and two, it's always the past or the future. You're thinking about the past, you're worrying about the past, you're depressed about the past, or you're anxious about the future. So quadrant three is the playful child. So we always use the example of Tigger. So it's the emotional here and now. It's in the moment it's present it's grateful it's excited if you think of tigger like it wants to do he wants to do things with his friends he's sort of an adrenaline junkie right because you don't really have any fear you're living in the present moment you're not fearful so you're like oh let's go skydiving or let's go you know do really fun things like that they're in the now but they're very very playful 
Quadrant four is what I call the sage. You can call it Yoda, or it's really the wise part of you. It's the part that is directly connected to the all. So as Jill Bolte Taylor describes, when she was, when that whole left side was turned off and she was just in bliss in the here and now, she literally couldn't tell where her skin ended and something else began. Mm -hmm. There was no separation. Mm -hmm. It was energy balls, as Scott used to say all the time, energy balls. And so that's what she was experiencing, was one with everything. So quadrant four is really your direct portal to the all, to your spirit, to yeah. your soul. It is kind of like, you know, Joe Dispenza would call it the divine. So that is the divine. That is your soul. That is who you are. Uh, you know, we say that all the time to find out who you really are. That is who you really are. You are yeah. this soul. Um, when you go out of body or you have a mystical ex experience, either in breath work or in a meditation or even, you know, a psychedelic, that is what you're accessing. That is still you, but it is in a quadrant for in the, the soul side of the brain. The, the first quadrant is your ego side of the brain. That is, you know, I am an accountant. I have three children. I live in such and such and, you know, a three bedroom home. That is the ego. So it's a great it's a great way to try to define those quadrants. Perfect. Which we need, right? We, in order to move forward and have a forward motion and have boundaries. As as quadrant four, we're boundaryless. We're we're one yes. with all. We obviously didn't choose to stay there. We obviously chose at some level to have a human experience. In order to operate in a three dimensional world, you have to have forward motion and boundaries and skin and individuation and mm -hmm. and you have to be an individual. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you really think about this, you know, we have, you know, as far as the human experience, you know, you tactile, you're touching things, you work on things, you're feeding your child, you're making food, you go to the store, you shop. That's all in, you know, quadrant one, quadrant two. That's all your whole life is based over there. Every now and then you can access this other side where you start to feel really good. You have a mystical experience, anything like that. That is the other side of your brain. They're both you. They are both you. So you can kind of see, this is what fascinated us of all these people we worked with, including ourselves. We saw Oh, so-and-so is always in quadrant four because she always goes out of body. That's where she loves to be in the mystical. Mm. She loves to be in that experience. She has a really hard time paying her bills. She has a really hard time, you know, accessing the, the function of the doing. Really hard time with that where others, you know, like a, 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 say a corporate attorney is very much in you know number one because they're getting stuff done they they go to court they do they have the doings all the time so you can almost just by this kind of define where you are or not and a little bit of both a little way more in one and not so much in four man i really wish i could get more mystical well then that's just raising the volume in quadrant four which Perfect. we will get to Perfect. And so another way to think about this is there was always a, at least in my experience, there was always a discussion in the spiritual community around, especially people in the Dr. Joe Dispenza community. I'd hear it a lot because he talks a lot about, you don't need to go to the past. You don't need to figure it out. You don't need to do any of that. So people would say, well, that's spiritual bypassing. And also we, we saw a lot of people sort of get stuck in the healing, in the trauma. And the, so if you think of spiritual bypassing, you can think of going from quadrant one directly to quadrant four and saying, okay, well, I'm going to have these mystical experiences and be one with all, but I'm, I'm going to avoid quadrant two at all costs, <laughs> right? I'm going to pretend that quadrant two isn't there. I'm going to pretend I don't have any emotional wounds from childhood. I'm just going to pretend I'm going to bypass it, I'm not ever going to go down there. And the moment I start to feel some sort of emotion, some sort of um, energy coming up, I'm just going to shove it right back down. And I'm just going to keep trying to go over to quadrant four. This happens a lot. 
However, that quadrant two will always be dictating to quadrant one. So you may do that, but find yourself in the example that he said, we knew people that were very mystical, but then would struggle in relationships. They would be incredibly insecure in relationships because they hadn't acknowledged that their quadrant two, their inner child, their shadow was still in pain and a lot of hurt. And because they didn't acknowledge that and allow themselves to go through the process of feeling it and recognizing it and then learning to be their own inner parent, their own, to reparent their own inner child because they didn't learn that and they're trying to skip it. They're, they're sort of stuck up in those two quadrants. You also know the people that get stuck down in two, as I said, that are constantly healing. They're constantly stuck and they can't move over to quadrant three, which is the pay playful present child or the mystical, right? So this is what, for me, it was like, oh my gosh, it helps explain why people are getting stuck in these areas because it's about balance. As he said, it's about learning to control the volume of each of these to find balance, which is the process we'll be taking you through. So in talking about the open focus, as I said, I looked at, he literally had a graph of four, the four different ways we pay attention. I was like, oh my gosh, you can map these four different ways of paying attention and they fit perfectly over these quadrants for what they represent in each of these quadrants, which was a narrow focus, objective focus, diffuse focus, and immersed focus. All of those perfectly described these different quadrants and these characters. Then, as I said, I moved on to mapping the flow cycles. So when you talk about what is flow or, or what, are the cycle, what are the cycles, the first stage of the flow cycle is struggle. So this usually means you're learning something new, right? So you're learning how to ski. It's sort of a struggle at first. It's, it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. You have to learn how to move your body. The second stage is release. So if you're, if you're trying to learn something new, you're in the struggle, you're learning it, then you need to release it. Let it go to your subconscious. This usually involves something physical. So go play a game of golf. Go, you know, do something that puts you sort of where you're not thinking about anything. You're totally in the present moment. You've released the struggle to your subconscious mind. The next stage in that cycle is flow. So if you are a artistic person or a writer or a sports person, you know what flow is. It's literally where you become totally immersed. If, if you meditate, this is states of meditation. You're completely one with everything that's happening in that moment. It's if, if you're a writer, I, we're both writers, so we can easily relate to this. It's as if the words are just flowing through you. You're not thinking about the words, they're coming out on the page, right? The last and final stage is recover, meaning you can't stay in flow. It's a heightened state. It releases a lot of chemicals. You can't stay there for forever. Again, you can't stay in that mystical space for forever unless you want to move towards enlightenment. So you must go through the process of recovery. You must allow everything to sink in, to rest, let your body recover. Interestingly enough, if we look at this flow cycle, it's literally the infinity sign as you move through each of these. Then it came the, the next level of where I was able to map these quadrants. If any of you know who Carl Jung is, they called him the grandfather of psychology. You actually, he talked about the 12 archetypes of our identities. And those 12 archetypes actually fit under four main categories. I was able to map these four main categories and these 12 archetypes under each of these quadrants. If you guys, any of you are familiar with internal family systems, which is used a lot in the psychedelic space, internal family systems is recognizing the different identities inside of you. They map also perfectly under these four quadrants. And so this is starting to go, oh my gosh, these four mm -hmm. quadrants can map everything. Then he also talked, Young also talked about the four sort of stages of, he didn't call it flow, but how we operate in the world, the thinking, the feeling, the self, and the sensation once again, fits perfectly under each of these quadrants. He says, this is how, if you want to move in a balanced way through the world, you use these, these, these four ways to do this, these four ways fits under each part of the brain that accesses those four ways as the thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition. Then I started going, well, interestingly enough, 
these four quadrants are in nature, naturally. The four elements fit perfectly under each of these quadrants. And not only do those four elements fit, fit perfectly for the description of each of these quadrants, the 12 astrological signs that fit under each of those fixed elements describe perfectly which each of these quadrants so you come in as a as a taurus and you're more earth you're more about the thinking and the in the and the having and the and the doing right that's your natural state you naturally come in with sort of a volume level turned up in your quadrant one the funny thing is is if you read a lot of spiritual texts they will tell you that as you become more awakened you actually become more like all of the astrological mm -hmm. signs so you'll find yourself resonating so much with just the one you were born into and you'll find yourself resonating with a lot of others and the explanation that we will give you is because you're learning to equalize the volume of all four of these quadrants which is what we we wish to take people through the process not only in, in, in the four elements, but our compass. Our compass literally has four directions. Not only in nature, but in our bodies, our heart has four chambers, the left atrium, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the right atrium. Every single one of these chambers has to work in perfection with each other in perfect and complete balance for our heart to beat for our whole lives. This is something that's in nature. And so the left atri atrium actually receives from the lungs. It receives oxy oxy oxygen rich blood. Wow, that was really oxygen rich blood. It receives it from the lungs, which is the feminine aspect, which is quadrant two. It's a very feminine. It receives and then it pushes. It gives it to the left ventricle and the left ventricle then pushes it out to the body. This oxygen rich blood, it pushes out to the body, which is the masculine. And then from there, the right atrium receives this blood that now has no oxygen in it. It receives it back from the bud and it pushes it to the lungs. And then the lungs it pushes it to, excuse me, the right ventricle. And, the, and then the right ventricle pushes it to the lungs to enrich it with oxygen. And this process, just like the infinity sign of the flow cycle, the heart chambers does the same exact thing. Lastly, when we really, when I, when I connected these very deep spiritual esoteric teachings with these quadrants and mapped them right over there, in fact, we were just listening to it uh, with Michael Beckwith talking about the four levels of consciousness that we go through as we awaken. The first level being to me, which is very victimization. Things are happening to me. I need things to change on the outside in order to make me feel good on the inside. This is where a lot of addicts live. They live in number one because they're very uncomfortable. So they want something to change their inner state. The next level is by me, which is sort of the, the self-help and the personal mm -hmm. development. It's a, it's a level up in consciousness. It's I am the ego and I will make things happen by me. I will manifest. Yes. I will manifest my healing. I will. I will. I will. Very masculine. Very right? Masculine. So we're talking, you know, we're forward fitting moving. the forward moving. The next level of consciousness is through me, which is sort of the present moment and the surrender going back into the feminine, the working with your higher self, mm -hmm. with God, with source, letting things happen through you. If you've ever read Michael Singer, The Surrender mm -hmm. Experiments, a perfect example perfect of through example. me. And then the next level of consciousness is as me. Literally, you are one with all. Mm -hmm. Everything is in perfection. There is no duality. You know, you always hear all the time that spiritual growth isn't linear. You know, they, they always talk about, mm -hmm. well, of course it's not, because you're always moving through each of mm -hmm. these quadrants. Constantly. It makes sense why it's not linear. Yeah. So then lastly, I, I study a lot of the Rosicrucians, which really are a modern form of the Essenes. If you've heard of uh, the religion of the Essenes, which really goes back to hermetic principles, which is pretty much the one of the very first um, spiritual concepts is the hermetic, hermetic principles. And in the Rosicrucians, they talk a lot about sacred geometry and they describe the very first geometric pattern Oh, excuse me, I'm skipping a slide, sorry. If we go back to the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire, the esoteric teachings will tell you there's a fifth element. The fifth element is ether. 
the all that is, right? This symbol right here is the ether symbol that happens in the middle. It's in the middle of all of these things because it's said to be the connection with all, all that is. Now, if we talk about the Rosicrucian, the very first geometric pattern is a circle, the all that is, and then the boundary around that. In Indian, in, in ancient Indian teachings, they call this that that center point singularity, the cave of Brahma. The cave of Brahma is the connection to all that is. The cave of Brahma literally can be mapped in our brain as the center point, the third ventricle, the, th the third, the third, not ventricle. I can't think of the word. The aspect of our brain that is literally in the center of all four of these regions, which is your pineal and pituitary gland literally the access point to the all that is in the center of all of this. So hopefully now you're seeing that every single thing is making sense as far as being able to map this. So do, what did you yes. add to that? Well, you forgot one. And what was that? Well, when you come to nature. Yes. What did you forget? What did I forget? You forgot the, the seasons. The, the four seasons. seasons. I because did you can, forget the four seasons. Even, How could I forgot that? And yes. you can even say Frankie Valley and the four seasons, but that's my yeah. age. Anyway. They are mapped perfectly. I have 100%. mapped them. I forgot to put them in. Yeah. The and it's, it's another way. It's just to measure yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I love summer because summer's play and yes. I can do, I go out yes. and I'm doing Fire. things. And it's you third know, quadrant. <clears throat> exactly. So you, you can, you can kind of see where you may fit in all mm -hmm. these quadrants. And, and now if when you look at the ether, how the ether is over the center of all these things, this is where ketamine comes because the the goal here is to be able to have all quadrants, meaning you can get into all quadrants, recognize when you are in one quadrant and to equalize. Well, you know, being paralyzed and not being able to move. I have, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, for the last 20 some years, for me, it was like, why did I recover? And I've seen so many and I've tried to help so many that haven't. And why is that? And I, and this came into a lot of conversation between us, which we'll, we'll, we'll go into in, in the coursework to really help people understand why that might be. So when we brought ketamine into this, it started to really understand what ketamine was doing. And, you know, the, the people, we went to this ketamine retreat and there, you know, there was a lot of psychiatrists there. There was a lot of doctors there. And the one thing that the, the, the person who was putting the retreat on said, we don't really know what ketamine is doing. We know little bits about it. We know. Uh, what it is doing in little bits, but to really study it, we don't know. We really don't know. So when you look at the ether over top of the four quadrants, if you look at those four quadrants, like they are tanks that you can fill the level up. If you're a number one, then you're a doer. You work in corporate. I have a job. I have a mortgage. I have a dog. I need to feed that dog. If you are solely in that, your quadrant one is filled to the gills. It is filled up. If you are on the other side and you're in quadrant four and you always go out of body, you are always about the mystical, the everyday, not so much. You know, political systems, they don't matter to you. You are just always over there. You can channel, you can bring things through you, you get downloads, mystical experiences, right? But being in a number one can be difficult for you. But if we could equalize these and be able to understand in a moment what quadrant we are in in that moment and to understand how the quadrant works, if you have a, you know, a physical issue, MS, cancer, any of these things, this is what I've experienced. The lower density that we are, the lower vibration that we are, we're in a number one. We are in a number one. Life is heavy. So if you think of vibration, 
at that time where I was unable to move, I know why that happened to me because I was stressed out. I was working way too hard. And all I kept thinking is I want to go home and I want to go to bed. I got my wish because the, basically the computer said, overload. We need to protect the system. We need to shut this down. I was in number one and I wasn't accessing anything else. I was in number one and I was stressed out in a big way. So let me add something really quick to yes, that. Yes. Important to note that in each quadrant, our body actually releases different chemicals. We yes. actually have a difficult, different chemical release, a different way we pay attention, a different way we breathe. In the 12 weeks, that's exactly what we're gonna walk you through is understanding these quadrants so that you can, like he said, go, oh, my volume's way turned up on one. I need to equalize these other three quadrants. There's ways to not only, this is like a gym, right? You, you're you gonna start building the muscles, muscles atrophy if you don't use them. It's the same concept with these quadrants of your brain. They atrophy if you don't use them. There's ways to go to the gym and strengthen these individually. There's also ways in the moment to be able to move out because there's chemicals and things that you do in each moment. Sorry, go on. But also if you think of people, you know, we watched, we went to a lot of Dr. Joe workshops, you know, 14 of them, right? Each of us went to that many. And we were watching so many people unconsciously heal. And then we were watching people watch these people heal themselves and they were going, I'm going to heal myself, right? That didn't work for me when I was paralyzed. I didn't heal myself. I healed. All I did was focus on something. I and and Got you out know, of the way. people said you're going to be okay. I internalized that, and for me, it was just a waiting game. Now that that was my diagnosis. Now somebody else who has MS, what do they tell them? I'm sorry, you will never get out of that wheelchair. So they internalize that, right? So now it's just not a waiting game. This is my life. So it all incorporates in the brain. But what part of the brain does that incorporate in? And what if we can take that person that suddenly says, I'm going to heal myself. And we say, well, wait a minute, because if you're trying to heal yourself from the, the place number one that started the problem, yeah. which is in quadrant one, yeah. it's not going to work. You're doing is not going to work because you're trying to heal the thing with the same thing that, that produced it. a thing. So we need to move out of that quadrant and you need to do different. Yeah. Right. So that's where the ether comes in. If you look at this tank, that ether, it is a pipe well, in each one of those tanks. And what if we had a regulator instead of shooting all the energy into quadrant one? What if we had a regulator that even unknowing to us, the ego was depositing and dispersing, equalizing, regulating the energy to go into all four tanks. And instead of one level and all the other ones empty or one level and the other ones a little bit full 10%, what if we could equalize them all? That's what brings us to ketamine. That's what brings us to ketamine. So I'm gonna do another quick little slide. Before I do that, I wanna add that, um, the, the other amazing part of this quadrant theory to me, because I have always been very hard on myself, I believe that's the way that I yeah. changed was like yes. push myself harder Yeah. This in understanding this quadrant theory and, and perceiving through it. It takes away all judgment of self and mm -hmm. other because you go, oh, I understand I'm just in a specific quadrant right now. There's it takes away all judgment. You also can look mm -hmm. at another and understand and go. Oh, I see they're just stuck yes. in quadrant two, a wounded child. And this is why to understand that other people and what quadrant they're in, think of your teachers. Yeah. Think of your parents, yeah. right? We always looked up to those people as they knew everything. Well, if you have a teacher that is stuck in quadrant one and doesn't understand the daydreamer and suddenly you're getting a detention because you're just daydreaming and you're not doing your schoolwork quadrant one, then suddenly you're like, see, I'm wrong. See, I'm bad. See, I'm not paying attention. I got a D in Which that class. Quadrant two, I'm bad. Yep. And now everybody's going to judge me. And then that starts to line out our life. But when you start to go back in this quadrant theory, not only do we do help you prevent to create the map, 
we help you create the map of the people that have taught you. So you understand why you had the reaction you did, because you know why? Maybe you were right. Maybe they were stuck in quadrant two. Maybe they were the poor child and they taught you that and they brought you into their tank. So this is why this is mind blowing. It is literally a map to help you heal, to help you equalize and to actually create, to step into and trust. You know, if you're a religious person, you pray to God for a miracle. I want this to show up. And suddenly something happens and it shows up. Well, is that God or you, did you just move to quadrant four? Maybe God lives in your quadrant four. So in e it's easy to access because ultimately it is you. It is just your eyes looking back into your brain like the voice told me, my quadrant four told me while I was laying in that bed. Yeah, That's what saved me because I trusted it. Yeah. And if you follow, again, any um, ancient teachings, the number one common theme in every single one that you really, that, and I'm talking deep esoteric, not religion, will always tell you about balance. The, the in between, balance. the middle, the, the masculine and the feminine, the infinity, it's always going to be. And we really believe this is how we are supposed to operate. Yes. It's yes. just number one got way too much hold yes. and we all became individualized egos yes. instead of recognizing the whole if you think of the left side the ego is the science the right side as the spirituality this really to me which has always been a fascination to me is really how we bridge those two things it's recognizing the importance and as he said especially people who are trying to heal their body we need western medicine we need that to in order to work with the human body but it's when you only try to stay there and not bring in the other side this is why people mm -hmm. heal at dr joe they're not healing they're just tapping into the thing that brings the healing they're tapping and it's also why they have a really hard time when they go home because they just experienced mm -hmm. quadrant three yes. and four and then all of a sudden they go back home. They're like, oh, I don't want an ego. I don't want to be any part of that. Mm -hmm. Instead mm -hmm. of learning just how to equalize. Yes. Instead of just equalizing. So as he said, what we found, one of the most fascinating things is that they don't know, understand how ketamine is doing it. But let me let me go through exactly what ketamine is and, and why for us it's fundamental to this process of equalizing these different quadrants and tanks. So for those of you that may not know what, what ketamine actually is, it, it helps you access non-ordinary states of consciousness. So basically it causes a, a disruption from the everyday thoughts and patterns of being, those everyday ways of thinking that you don't even realize that you're stuck in. It's actually a disassociative anesthetic and it's used mostly in emergency rooms for procedures that require like a, a short, short term sedation. So they don't want you to completely go out. They want you to be able to breathe on your own, but not remember and, and um, be asleep. And that's what the ketamine does. It's very, very, very safe, especially in a wide age range beginning at three months. So they can actually give three month old babies ketamine in the emergency room. The safety profile is huge on it. However, because of the effects that were studied on people who struggled with treatment resistant depression, suicidal thoughts and chronic anxiety, it's now being used in a therapeutic, therapeutic setting at much lower doses than what they use in the emergency room and is being used right now by psychotherapists as a disassociative psychedelic. It is one of the most widely used drugs in the world because of its safety profile. It's why they use it in emergency rooms. As a disassociative psychedelic, it creates a sense of disconnection from your ordinary reality. In other words, it's turning off that left side of the brain. It's turning off the ego. The psychedelic experience is crucial to creating changes in perspectives and moods and allows people to have a bird's eye view of their life. Research also shows that ketamine, big deal here, has neuroplastic properties, which is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections, opening up the tanks. We theorize that neuroplastic changes can translate into concrete new thought patterns and behaviors. I wanna share that I was reading a study last night 
by Penn State. And what they found, they don't understand how ketamine is is almost like intuitively turning off certain synaptic connections and turning on others. They don't know how it, it's doing this, but it seems to know which ones to turn off and which ones to turn on. What they found, they did EEG brain studies on people that they were implanting electro electrodes in their brain to study seizures. These people were experiencing a lot of seizures, so they wanted to to um, implant these electrodes. But what they did in the process right before that is they gave them ketamine to see on an EEG what was happening. And they found huge gamma oscillations throughout the entire brain. Again, back to those of you that may study Dr. Joe and what he's, he measures is brain wave activity during meditations. And what he's finding is, you know, people are going deeper or having these gamma oscillations. The, the, this brings it right back to the open focus method because what the open focus method is actually creating alpha brain wave states throughout the entire brain, meaning all four quadrants of the brain are talking to each other in alpha brain wave. But when we go into gamma, which is what is happening, they actually recorded mm -hmm. this. The brain is going into gamma when they were giving them ketamine. And I wrote down, Gamma state is associated with high level processing that leads to integration and evolution because it's giving you new perspectives, literally. The ketamine works with the glutamate neurotransmitter. The glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter. It's in an abundance in our systems. But what happens, especially with people with MS, mm -hmm. ALS, mm -hmm. Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's mm -hmm. is that they have too much, they have too much glutamate in the, in the brain. The, the, the glutamate is too high. What ketamine is doing is regulating these glutamate neurotransmitters, turning some off and turning some on, literally creating exactly what we're talking about, the balancing effect of each of these things. They don't understand why which is great <laughs> and just so just, just as a side note there you know ketamine is not brought to you by pfizer <laughs> it's not brought to you by j and j this is a compound that is i guess mixed is yep. the best word yep, in a compound, compounding pharmacy so where does it come on I've come from we really don't know to be honest which i get really excited about that because the the best things that have come into my life have come from the unknown so um, that to me was in incredibly important. The other thing that we had always had a struggle with is when we would watch people, as we said before, go to a Dr. Joe retreat, for example, seven days, get in that very, very high state, connect into quadrant four and be in quadrant four. But then what happens? They go back into their life and they go right back into, into quadrant one because that's where their life is built. That's where the energy of their house is. That's where the, you know, their job is. That's where everything is. So suddenly everything that they took, they went back into quadrant one and they, and the only way to get back into quadrant four was to go back to another workshop. So again, why ketamine? Yeah. It, it is the workshop. It takes you into that and brings it home with you because yeah. the thing that we learned the most about ketamine was it's not in the one hour journey and a, and a ketamine journey takes about an hour it's not just that it is the after effects of it it is how it you know it you suddenly get these urges to wow that's an interesting that's pauses a, and reactions. these pauses in of your own ego is suddenly being this other voice pops in and says well that was an interesting reaction scott why why would you have that reaction and it's like almost like somebody is talking to you because it is waking up the other side of the brain we have lived as humans on in our left brain yes yes I, I always, I had the sneakers that had left and right. He has a left and right issue. Because I have a left and right because issue. Because he uses both sides. Because I'm in the right, <laughs> I'm in the right side. I, I am very equalized, not yeah. fully, but I'm very equalized into my right side. And that's why a lot of people don't identify with me because they're in their left only and I'm, I'm in both, right? So that's where the magic can happen because out of that equalization comes a relationship. 
proof of that. Out of that equalization comes the money, the abundance. I am proof of that. Out of that equalization comes the healing. I am proof of that. But here's the really cool, I keep saying that, the other really cool thing. All we those things it. that happen, the money, the health, the relationship, the whatever it is you think you're seeking, all literally become byproducts of you being in balance with all four quadrants because you will receive downloads, but then you will have the ability to go and push them out into the world because you will be able to access all four of these quadrants. You know, a lot of a lot of um, spiritual teachings don't have an actual map, a linear yes. way to move forward. Yes. But then these other modalities that are purely based in just the human are too direct. Yes. They have too much force instead of allowing the other side to come in, the flow to come in. So this really and it's individualized and unique because some people have volumes turned up on four. Some people have volumes turned up on two. This is why we want to take a small group of 10 people through this. And let me say, you don't have to use the ketamine in this process. Mm -hmm. You can join this 12 weeks with us without doing the ketamine. The ketamine is an addition. We really are, are curious to see, can the ketamine assist in this yeah. map process? Actually, it's kind of, I, I, you know, so my perfect world in having this, this group that comes through with us in, in this first round of this, right? Um, I would like to have mostly ketamine, but I also would like to have some people that Absolutely. don't want to do the test. ketamine because we want to measure this. We yeah. want to test this and we, you know, have uh, an opportunity to do this, to actually measure. So we are really excited about being able to take somebody that has tried to heal and has not been able to heal yet it, maybe from ms maybe from you know an addiction we've seen people with addiction be able to move through it and because they start not only does the ketamine help equalize that but also with the quadrant theory they can start to see why they went to addiction because maybe they were equalized we also have you know your like your grandmother who mm -hmm. was quadrant four, mm -hmm. nobody understood her. She was called schizophrenic. She was called schizophrenic and ultimately took her own life, mm -hmm. right? So I, I could say the same thing with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, she was very quadrant four. She did not fit into the world of the 3D. She just didn't. She had to acquiesce to it and it took away all her magic. So this is a great way and and we're extremely excited mm. to find out where this will bring so mm. let's get to it let's tell them how to do this what yeah. it costs the whole good thing the whole good thing and so, then we can end this yeah as as i said this is this will be a unique and individual process which is why you know we're taking the small group through because over those 12 weeks we're going to dive into each quadrant heavily we're going to help you understand your own map where your volume levels are each we're going to help you create certain exercises just mm -hmm. like going to the gym to strengthen the quadrants you're not really strengthened in and yeah. that may be different activities for different people but you you're going to create this and the best part about it at the end of this 12 weeks you have your map it takes out all the guesswork yes. meaning we had a um we, we had a group coaching call a couple of weeks ago and you know one of the one of the people who's in our community was like i'm in this space but i'm i don't know what to do i'm struggling mm. here is why this is so important it takes all guesswork out because then if you have a clear vision and go oh i'm in quadrant three two i can stay there i have a choice yeah i can stay there yeah or if I want to get to quadrant four, oh, I just look on my map. Oh, those are the things that I can do to get out of yes. this. It takes away all guesswork. So to show you the logistics of how this is going to work, we start on June 13th, I believe. It's a Thursday, June 13th, I believe. So we will go through 12 weeks. We will have a live class teaching every week, every Thursday at 1 p.m., Eastern. So we'll be actually doing the teachings live. So it's not like you have to watch a recording, then you also have to get on the call. No, we're going to be doing the teachings live and obviously interacting um, each week to help you create them. And obviously those will be recorded. So they you will, will be able to watch them over yep. and over again. Yep. You will own them. 
you will also, yes. if you miss the live, you will be able to watch them at your convenience. Yes. It's not like after 12 weeks, you don't have access to the course. You get that course for forever. You get yes. access to those recordings and that course for forever. And then for those that are using ketamine in the process, we will do group journeys via Zoom every other Sunday. We're gonna, you'll have six total ketamine treatments. So we'll use those through every other week throughout that 12 weeks with an intention each time, yes. right? Because we're gonna be using this ketamine as an intention to create balance in these four quadrants. To help regulate the quadrants. To help regulate the quadr quadrants. And so this also includes your medical assessment with our physician. Mm -hmm. And then the six ketamine treatments that you get sent to you, you have those treatments with you. We'll have a, a private Facebook group as well as a Telegram chat. I, I'm going to add that in there because that's really helpful for people who are in the group and maybe, you know, at 10 at night, they're like, oh, I have this thing coming up and they want to discuss it. Someone else is they can use the Telegram chat. For that. And and why that's a big deal is because, you know, we we. It, it isn't just about the teaching and the ketamine. It's also about the community because you are going through something somebody else is going through. So we've always known community is huge in this. And that's why through the through the telegram and, you know, through even the, the live teachings, we will have that community, which is yeah. absolutely huge. Also, I just want to make sure that uh, the price includes everything it's all in so it includes your medical assessment with um with the the prescriber uh and also the medicine itself too correct yes, yes. so there you go all yeah. in this is an all-in thing yeah so and the and the telegram is helpful for you know we've worked with many people who don't really use facebook very much and um you know, this is another way for you to be able to communicate. I will say the biggest thing that we hear from the Academy retreats that we have led so far and all of our group coaching over the last six years, I 95% of the people will tell you the community is just as big Huge. as anything else that we do in yep, this process. It is. And so having that community also, you know, Scott and I have done many different forms of classes and programs and courses. We've had ones that people can join at any time. So they're just kind of doing it on their own, mm -hmm. but we have group calls we've done where we've taken people through the process together and it seems as though over the last six years and listening to all the feedback from the people we work with they loved having a group go through a process together yes because they bond just they like bond. at the retreat just like at a retreat they bond yeah right? this is basically a 12 12 week re retreat absolutely it really is absolutely um and then i yeah, what was the other thing i wanted to make sure um we do have to make sure that people are fit for this, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we, it will be a brief discussion yeah. to make sure that you are, you know, you are fit for this program. That is very uh, key to us. We are only taking so many people yep. through this first one, and we want to make sure that you know we we have that build. So we, you know, that that's really important to us. Yeah, so. absolutely. And the thing is, we were doing, we were offering at home ketamine therapy. What we found is that, you know, not everyone was coming on the calls. There wasn't a linear process. We, we off, we had many tools for integration, but it wasn't a process that we went through together. And so why we decided to replace this with that at home ketamine that we're not going to do anymore is because it's using the ketamine, but it's giving you a process yes. to use it through so yes. that you're engaged in the process. You're yes. not just because, yes, of course, ketamine will be effective if you if you use it without some sort of process on your own. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's doing things in the brain. But what we really believe is this process is going to enhance this ability to have your own map your own yes. self-awareness yes and and so the ketamine can even help you more and just so we understand how the ketamine uh the journeys uh will work every other sunday um they will be you know basically in online in a in like a zoom uh, a zoom meeting and how that works then is you will be prescribed your ketamine you will have it you will you know meet with the doctor that all, all that will be happen ahead of time you will then know your dosage right through your doctor and you will we all have a playlist which we have created these playlists they are absolutely huge almost as important as the ketamine itself very very important so you will have those playlists 
you will be able to then do the journey uh, online with everyone in as a group in your own home, in your own bed, and we walk you through the whole process. So uh, that's basically how that works. And if you can't do it with us, you can do them on your own. Too. Oh, 100%. There, it's not required. Yeah. The first one, the first one, we'd like to be, you know, ob observing you. So uh, that can always be worked out. We, we, you know, we, we, you know, we, we want to make facilitate this the best possible way that we can do that. Yeah. So it's 3000 with the ketamine, 2500 if you are not going to do the ketamine. And then, of course, there are payment options available. All you need to do is reach out. So if you're like, yeah, I'm, I, I, I want to see where this takes me. So that's the thing. Really need to think about this. OK, if what we're saying is true and even in the ketamine treatments, we've seen, you know, people going to a, a ketamine clinic, which just offers the ketamine um, and, you know, a thousand dollars per treatment, a thousand dollars per treatment. So yeah. this is a very, yeah. very discounted price that we are going to do for the first uh, yeah. the first group that we have, we will be doing, you know, based on the results that we've already seen. So we yeah. know already um, we're adding this quadrant theory and this 12 week class to really take people through the whole thing, the integration. This has the integration. This has everything. So what you are, you know, what we are offering this for now it this will increase this at least will be double um because we 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 have a lot here we we have doctors we have mm -hmm. all of us involved a lot of research involved mm -hmm. uh we are going to be bringing a lot of research that mm -hmm. have been done by mm -hmm. others just like mm -hmm. you know pen mm -hmm. uh did this and where mm -hmm. you will have all the access to all this research yeah. that she has done that i have done mm -hmm. to really bring this in to help you understand i can trust it and i can go there that has always been the hardest part yeah. For me, is to be able to see the resistance of somebody not being able to trust the quantum yeah. quadrant four. Yeah. So it really is um, this whole process, this 12 week process, is using science, it's using brain science, it's using psychology. It's really some, some really foundational framework psychology methods, it's using astrology. It's using deep esoteric teachings so that it can reach you whatever quadrant yes. you are heavy in. Yes. You will understand this you because if you are if you are a left brainer, a quadrant one or a quadrant two, you're gonna have a really hard time accepting, as he said, the, the the very quantum unknown spiritual. But if you're in the spiritual, sometimes you have a very hard time understanding the linear. So this process why i'm so we are so excited why we're so passionate is because it blends all of those mm -hmm. things into one yes. it brings them all together so if you want to do this like i said it, it we start next thursday so all you need to do is send us an email or a facebook messenger and if we know you we've worked with you before obviously we don't need to do like a pre-assessment screening type of thing um if we've never worked with you before we may want to hop on a quick phone call just as he said to make sure that this is a, a good fit for you but all you need to do is facebook message us or send us an email you can send it to mnscott222 at gmail.com. So it's E-M-A-N-D-S-C-O-T-T-222 at gmail.com. You have that email if you registered for this. So um, that's all you got to do. And, and we can get you started. So if you have any questions, like I said, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. It's a small group. We've already got people signed up. So there's only limited spots left. And as he said, really, this, this price is... A, a really, really good value for everything that you're going to be getting in this process. It could potentially change everything for you. Everything. Everything. Yeah. And I mean that. And we, we called the group Becoming Superhuman because to us, this really is the next evolution and stage of what it means to be a spirit, having a human experience. And if we're able to access these, wow, it, this will be a whole different world if, if this is the case. So. Your world your world. Absolutely. So with all that being said, like I said, reach out if you have any questions, if you're watching the replay, reach out with any questions and we hope to hear from some of you guys soon. Yeah.